Mesopotamia means between rivers or fertile land. Mesopotamia is the name given to the area of the Near East that lies between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, and which by extension includes the fertile areas that lie on the banks of both rivers, so it is an area that extends into the non-desert areas of present-day Iraq and the border area of northeastern Syria. A further distinction is usually made between northern or upper Mesopotamia and southern or lower Mesopotamia. Upper Mesopotamia, also known as Jazira, is the area between the Euphrates and Tigris from their sources to Baghdad, while Lower Mesopotamia is the area from Baghdad to the Persian Gulf and includes Kuwait and parts of western Iran. The term Mesopotamia refers mainly to this entire area in the ancient ages, at which time it was divided into Assyria, to the north, and Babylonia, to the south. Babylonia, also known as Chaldea, in turn, was divided into Akkadia, upper part, and Chaldea, lower part. The names of cities like Ur or Nippur, of legendary heroes like Gilgames, of the Code of Hammurabi, and of the extraordinary buildings known as ziggurats, come from ancient Mesopotamia. And episodes mentioned in the Bible, or in the Torah, such as the Universal Flood, or the Legend of the Tower of Babel, show events that occurred in this area. The pre-philosophical thought of Mesopotamia was polytheistic, this means that they believed in many gods, they believed that the earth was a giant island, and that it was divided into four sectors where they worshipped several gods in a single region, but as a whole they worshipped and paid tribute to all of them. The numerous civilizations that flourished in the area influenced the Abrahamic religions. Abrahamic religions are monotheistic beliefs, that is, belief in one god, and recognize a spiritual tradition identified with Abraham. This term is mainly used to refer collectively to Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, to these religions are sometimes added others such as Baha'ism, the Samaritans, the Mandeans and the Druze. In the 3rd millennium BC, collections of proverbs, which can be considered useful sentences for life, and which constitute a form of thought, became popular in courtly literate environments. Thanks to them we know that at first the royalty was concerned with the exaltation and dissemination of their military victories. In this sense it should be noted that the state or public sector was composed of those who owned the property of the temple and the palace as a property of the god whose representatives they were on earth and whose main objective, although at first it was to obtain surplus production for the sustenance of the temple and staff, scribes, priests and administrative staff, it evolved as a result, priests and administrative, it evolved towards the total control of this production, with which the lands were worked by peasants influenced under a physical ideological cohesion, who were remunerated by the power with rations of barley, wool and oil for illumination and hygiene, and varied in quantities according to age and gender. Close to the palace were the so-called men, who were citizens with the possibility of access to land, and were linked to the palace activity, as well as scribes or officials who had managed to accumulate the capital for the exploitation of the land. Another social sector was composed of the so-called Mezquinos, the Mezquinos, made up of sectors that could live only from their corporal labor and the cultivation of their plots of land, these belonged to the weakest social groups because they were socially unprotected and were subjects of the king who, as previously mentioned, was responsible for the temple. Finally, there were the slaves or servants, made up of people who had debts with the palace and were voluntary servants who worked to pay off their debts or served as warriors with captive enemies. Both Babylonians and Sumerians accepted the identity of having a name, for them having a name was synonymous of existing, besides the knowledge of the divine names had an enormous resonance. In this regard there are very striking documents, such as the dialogue of the master, and the servant, or the monologue of the suffering righteous. Also noteworthy is the little Avesta, Corda Avesta, much more recent than the preceding books and whose content is formed by hymns of great poetic beauty addressed to the various secondary divinities, Yuzadas, that late Mazdaism has incorporated into the monotheistic religion of Zoroaster. These hymns were used for private devotions, and could be recited by both laymen and priests. During the Persian period, the oldest books of the Avesta contain real abstract philosophical conceptions, with human responsibility for one's actions, or the free choice between good and evil. The Avesta is the set of sacred texts of the Mazdean religion that form the holy book and priestly code of the Zoroastrians. In its present form, it is composed of two major parts. On the one hand, we find the liturgical texts, 
consisting of hymns for sacrifices, rules concerning all circumstances of life, rites and rules of purification from evil. There are also several cosmogonic and mythological narratives, and a collection of prayers and invocations. During the reign of Shapur II, in the 4th century BC, an academy was founded in Jundai Shapur consisting of a medical faculty developed in the philosophy of Galen. Galen of Pergamon, in present-day Turkey, who lived from 129 BC to 216 BC, was a Greek physician and philosopher. Galen's thought had a profound influence on the medicine practiced in the Byzantine Empire, which later spread to the Middle East and finally reached medieval Europe, where it survived until the 17th century. Giorgio Bacciolati, who has published extensively in the fields of Akkadian philology, linguistics, and literature, cuneiform graphology, history of Mesopotamian political institutions and religion, among other. Works argues that the origins of philosophy go back to early Mesopotamian wisdom, which embodied certain philosophies' life, particulars, dialogues, epic poetry, folklore, hymns, lyrics, prose works and proverbs. Babylonian reason and rationality developed beyond empirical observation, which implies an exercise of abstraction. Abstraction is a mental operation aimed at conceptually isolating a particular property or function of an object and thinking what it is, ignoring other properties of the object in question. Babylonian thought was axiomatic. The concept of axiomatic is widely used to refer to everything that is evident and true, that is, it is proven to be so, as it is presented and shown, and then it turns out to be unquestionable and irrefutable before the questionings that may arise and that want to show it as something doubtful or open concerns about it. Babylonian thought was also based on an ontology of open systems. Ontology means the study of being, it studies being in general, and its properties, and analyzes the different fundamental entities that form and compose the universe. Babylonian thought had a considerable influence on the principles of ancient Greek and Hellenistic philosophy. In particular, the Babylonian text Dialogue of Pessimism contains similarities with the agonistic thought of the Sophists, dialectics, and the dialogues of Plato, as well as proving to be a precursor of the Socratic method. The Ionian philosopher Thales was influenced by Babylonian cosmological ideas. Philosophy originated in the scribal sphere. Unfortunately, no treatise in the style of those of Boethius is preserved, but the poems, dialogues and proverbs that constitute a solid reflection are well known. If you want to know more about how Mesopotamia evolved, how they lived, how were the social, political or economic structures of the Sumerians, the Akkadians, the Babylonians, or the Assyrians, and about the Persian invasion, visit the history videos on this channel. If you want to know about their religion, visit also the videos on the history of religions or mythology on this channel.